Hello, beautiful family, lovers of good things, lovers of important personnel all over the globe. I bring greetings from a grateful heart. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your time zone. Thank you for your love, thank you for your support. I just can't thank you enough. So, in this platform, we react to all videos and we give you all the latest updates. In fact, we draw the world closer to your desktop. So, please watch this video and I will be watching it with you. Don't forget, drop your opinion in the comment section and I'll be right back already established great guys to carry out a project he goes to look for somebody who has the heart to do his will and will be willing to pay the price and uh, when he gets such a person he enables him empowers him and gives him wisdom to be able to contend with all the wisdom the others who believe or think that they are the people the right candidates have so by the time he finished discussing with them, they realized that they didn't know nothing. And uh, even in the biblical uh, times, all these things have been there. God will usually go and pick the person who is despised. That's how he picked Solomon among his brothers. Uh, his elder brother felt that he should be the person, Adonijah. But David didn't pick him. David picked Solomon because that was the one that God wanted. And God gave him wisdom. The same thing with Samuel. Eli had thought that it would be him to continue with his children according to the priesthood, but eventually it was Samuel that turned out to be a great prophet in Israel and a priest. When Jesus Christ came to the same thing, and somebody once asked the question, can anything good come out from Nazareth? Yet it was this same Jesus that God chose such that the Pharisees could not withstand the wisdom that was in him because that comes from God. They asked the question, how knoweth this man uh, wisdom or knowledge, having never learned? How knoweth him letters, having never learned? He said, my doctrine is not mine. As I hear from my father, I tell you. And the same thing applies to Nandi Kanu. He came up with a very superlative performance in terms of uh, explaining things, whether in the field of economics, politics, or social arguments, you know, history, histories, you know, things like that. And when they became so offended with him and decided to, to kill him, to remove him, God raised up another person and endowed him with wisdom and even more, even more deadly in executing his things than Onyendu. And that's uh, Samuel Eba. And now suddenly, Igbo politicians are beginning to realize that if we have to make any headway, this guy whom we thought was nobody, whom we considered a miscreant, whom we all abused, whom we conspired to have him kidnapped and brought to Nigeria so that the vision will die, they suddenly realize that they need to meet this guy if there's going to be anything to happen. Now, we are not interested in Nigerian politics. So if the reason why they are trying to get Namdi Kano out is to bring an opportunity for them to find favor with the Northerners and then possibly tomorrow they could be nominated to be to run for presidency after a Northern candidate has succeeded or not. God knows the heart of every man. They have the manipulations. The Bible says there are many devices in the man's heart. Nevertheless, it's the counsel of God that shall stand. And that is one thing with the Biafran struggle. It is the counsel of God that shall stand. God did not raise Namde Kano to dump him and dump Biafrans. Because we call upon his name, we serve him, and we don't have any evil intention against our neighbors. Rather, they have against us. And they despise this God that we worship. They blaspheme his name and they treat him with contempt. And he watches and looks at them because he knows their end point. These are mortal men that will just fizzle out, fizzle out in one one in a twinkle of an eye so suddenly soludo is coming to his senses and he's asking the federal government to listen to the canon soludo who single-handedly worked against ipo in anambra state did everything that he could blackmail them frame them up suddenly soludo is turning around this ipob people are those that follow Namdi Kano believe in his vision. These are Biafrans. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Peter B will turn around tomorrow and start saying this, singing the same song. This Peter B who is totally out to see that Biafra is destroyed. Peter B who said that Biafra died 50 years ago. Peter, Peter B who betrayed his master, Ikemba. Peter B who, when Ojuku was sick, or was really said it, and needed medical treatment, Peter B was governor, and it was on Ojuku's appeal that the Anambra people voted Abga into government to sustain that light. And Peter B was the one nominated and presented to the people. When this man was sick, to show you how wicked, how wicked Peter B is. Those of you who follow him, Peter B will happen to you. Nigeria will happen to you. You think God is not seeing all these things people are doing? Those of you who think that uh, you are the Igbo think, uh, elders, politicians. You, see, you think God is not seeing it? Judgment there comes. And Peter B in his carelessness and refusal to pay attention to Ikemba. As at when due, Ikemba died. He died before his time. Ikemba died and Gowan is still alive. Ikemba died and Tiwa Danjuma is still alive. Peter B could not do anything to sustain that little one which we have. Just one person who stood for Biafra with his father's resources and said, no, let us do what we can, regardless that this is our, our man, our own father here. Let's spend money, protect him. Let's spend money for his treatment. It will be in a bid to try to tell Nigerians that he doesn't spend money anyhow. Ojuku's life was snuffed out out of Pitobi's carelessness and, and refusal, reluctance to deal with his health issue as at when due. That's why I look at Pitobi followers. I know that you people, you have your head, you need your head re-examined. Because if you can do it to Kemba, of all people, he can do it to you. If boys were killed and their bodies floated on the river, and Peter B didn't care, what Ralph was really said it, he can do it to you. Keep following him. Peter B will happen to you. No matter the promise he gave you, the devil is still the devil. Whenever the devil, look, when you talk about the devil, you may not see him physically, but you see the manifestation of his works through his agents, whom he has possessed, and they begin to showcase these things without missing or without wasting time. Pitobi symbolizes what Satan stands for. If he makes any promise to you, Satan, when Satan sinned against God, God took away from Satan power. The power to do good. Because while angels were in heaven, they manifested two types of powers. The malevolent power and the benevolent power. The benevolent power is the power to do good. And the malevolent power, the malevolent power is the power to do evil. So when Satan sinned against God, God took away from Satan the power to do good. He allowed him with the power to do evil. To prove to Satan that regardless of your evil power, a time will come when people, certain people, will not believe in you. They'll believe in somebody whom I'm going to send. And because of those who have believed, there is no justification for your rebellion and wickedness. I am going to punish you and send you into everlasting destruction in the lake that burned with uh, fire, the lake of fire. That was a promise to Satan. So he knew he had a short time to leave. And so, if Satan wants to give you a gift, even if from his whole heart he intends to give you a good gift, because he has been condemned into giving evil, all his apples that he gives to you are filled with worms. As you, as you open whatever he gives you as a package, you see evil inside. Why? That was the condemnation that God put Satan into. He took away from him the power to do good and allowed him to, to have the power to do evil. That is why Satan is always associated with evil. The thief cometh not for, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that was what they did to Nam the Kano. They came to steal, to kill, and to destroy him. But they cannot. And so, even if Satan gives you ice cream, if you open it, you see hooks then. Anything that Satan gives you is an attachment that holds you to bondage. You will see his black hand his dark hand, his evil hand. Black here, I'm not making refer reference to the black man. You know, with all this nonsense you hear about, you know, white people saying white is good. They are not white, though. 
I'm saying in terms of the spiritual perspective, the evil that is with Satan, whatever he gives, it's not good because there is day and there is night. In the night, there is darkness. And in the darkness, evil things lock around. In the day, you can see and prevent it. So I'm not going to go into that you know, theological you know, arguments now. But what I'm trying to say is that if Satan wants to give you a gift, open it, it will see evil. And that is the thing that Peter B represents or stands for. He wants to give you good governance in an umbrella state, but at the expense of your life. He will kill people. He wants to be your president at the expense of your life, at the expense of the life of Namdekano, at the expense of the life of any Biafra who stands for our liberation and freedom. Even the very people that follow Peter Obi, that are the obedience, you don't know what they have in stock for you. You don't know the covenant he has gone with the Northerners. That is being put by his side. What you are only seeing is outside. I have, personally, I have a lot of problems with Peter Obi because he appeared at a time when it's like they have told him, look, this Biafra agitation is coming up. But we don't want it to continue because it will destroy Nigeria. Why don't we give you a chance to be president? Come up so that you can douse down this agitation, weaken their hands. We can use and we can make you the president so that you can be a president of Nigeria. It will be better for you to be a president of the whole of Nigeria and be known than be the president of just Biafra. But P2B has forgotten to know that the population of Biafra is bigger than that of the population of Cameroon. The population of Biafra is bigger than that of Uganda. It's bigger than that of Kenya. Biafrans. And within a short time, you will have more honor as a Biafran leader. I'm not talking to Peter Bio. I'm not saying he's going to be a Biafran leader. No, God forbid. A man will have more honor as a Biafran leader than being a leader in Nigeria. Right now, the Nigerian passport is not being recognized by the Finnish government. Most nations don't have regard for Nigerian passport. They don't have regard for Nigerian leaders because they don't have integrity. And so, but Peter Bio, them, they are they, they don't look beyond their nose. What they perceive, this is where they cooked nice rice and stew. Let me go and eat. They don't look beyond it. They don't look at the greater picture. They cannot look at the greater picture in respect to their people. They think that that picture we call that is the greater is a small picture. They think Nigeria is the great picture. But Nigeria does not offer you a future. It does offer you a hope. Even those in charge know it. And by their attitude, they are working every day to see that it doesn't work. Because how could you imagine in a situation where in a country you have a leader and they are killing people, raping women, he cannot call them to order. But where there is peace, you know, people do their businesses. In a country where there is no light, no good roads, nothing. A lot of money is gotten and it's been siphoned. And then loans are taken, which may not be paid again. And at the end of the day, you submit your sovereignty to another nation. It's a very simple thing to understand that that nation doesn't have a future. They are mortgaging their, their future into the hands of foreigners. And that shows incompetence in leadership. That's the truth. So, Obi came out to truncate the Biafran project. And he knows. Because Obi never liked the Biafran project. That was why recently he came out and said Biafra died 50 years ago. So even when he came back, was handing over to Obi in Anambra State, Obi in his mind had a different project. So he is promising he came back. He gave him a gift that I'm going to be the governor of Anambra State. But in being the governor of Anambra State, when he came back, opened that uh, um, package, he saw evil inside. What happened? He was sick. Obi couldn't come to his rescue. In his very presence, a son he made the governor could not come to his rescue when he needed medical assistance, financial help. Obi couldn't. Obi will happen to you. Because everything inside Obi is evil. Evil against his people. He, and he doesn't hide it though. He doesn't hide it. He told them, the Fulanese, that you are going to be the greater beneficiaries, the greatest beneficiaries of my administration. That means he did not have plans for the Igbo people. And in any ways, we are not interested in Nigerian election. And we are just saying, it. let us go so that we can build our own things in our own way. If, I'm even foreseeing that if it happens that way, if there are splinter republics that come up in their various groups, they might even do better. Even the Northerners, I suddenly wake up and realize that, okay, we no longer have the Southeast where we depend on to help us out. We can, you know, harness our own resources and build our own nation. It is possible. And Obi had the boldness to say that Biafra died 50 years ago. Any man that is following Obi and heard this thing and you're still following him, God will judge you. 
Because even your very life is sold to the Fulanese. Your future has been mortgaged. And you don't want to face, I'm not going to shout as I'm talking. I'm not angry. I've been thinking over so many things which I want to discuss this morning. So, if Obi in his heart could be saying these things to the hearing of everybody, that first of all, don't vote me because I'm an evil man. But this arrangement had been before now that it rotates among the geopolitical zones. And when the South started complain, Nigeria is listening to them and gave it to Jonathan. It went to the Southwest, went to the Northwest, Northeast. But when it came to the point of the Southeast, Suddenly, everybody changed. That we may not do this thing based on region. They changed it. How, how, how will a man from Southeast understand that he is not loved by the Nigerian people and still, are still talking about one Nigeria? Somebody said, it was Kelechi, he said that you cannot be an intellectual and still be a Nigerian. It sounds funny, but it is true. You cannot be an intellectual and still be a Nigerian. Because it's like once you are identified as a Nigerian, it's like the, you're, you are robbed of your intellect. Um, uh, Onyendu said they are intellectuals. Because why is why is Soludo waking up from sleep now? Anyway, I'm coming to him. So, Peter Obi does not have the interest of the people, people at heart. Where have you ever seen if any nation want to run an election, they go to Chatham House in Britain? What to go and do what there? What are you going to do there? Or Southeast politicians, for you to get any placement, you go to Sokoto and go and sit down on the floor before the Sutta. When you come to the Igwe of Furniture, you want to sit on a sofa and want Igwe to stand up and address you because you despise your own. And when you despise your own, you go to the Fulani man, he knows that you have despised your people. And if you are bigger than the Igwe of Onicha, then you come to the Caliphate and sit on the floor. You are lower than the Sultan. By implication, your Igwe is far lower than him. So you just sell yourself out because you want something. People who stand their grounds in defense of their people normally get respect from their opponents. When uh, Lord Lugard, Felix Lugard, wrote a letter to the Sultan of Sokoto over the Emir of Zaria, is it Gwandu, of his insubordination to the Sultanate. He told him that I can do something. And the Sultan told him, you don't have any right to say anything. Who are you? You're a cafe. Who are you to come and tell me what to do? For that reason, he rejected the offer of the British people to fight something on his behalf. And they respected him for that. But when it comes to the evil man, you sell your brother away. You sell him to the Fulani, you sell him to the British people. And when they look at you, they know that you don't have a base, you are a fool. Because the very people who are supposed to back you up, you have sold them. So you're only standing alone on the basis of the fact that you'll be given a position. That position does not hold power, does not hold water, because you are just alone. For who he, he who gave you the position can take it away from you. But if you're mandated by your people, they cannot be taken away. Because your people stand behind you to speak. Giddy giddy, who goes it? But unfortunately, South East politicians don't seem to understand it. They are so politically uh, unwise. They don't have wisdom. Politically foolish. That when you look at them, you begin to wonder if actually they really, really went to school. Or their application, maybe they play by the books, but not what happens on the ground, practically. And you need this practical experience on the ground. You don't just deal with the book. That's why I said, you know, 30% education, 70% common sense will do a lot to help a man in leadership. 30% education, 70% common sense. Common sense. Most times leadership, what you need is common sense. And common sense de de demands that you have taken an oath of office to defend your people. Therefore, anything that will jeopardize your life or kill them or destroy them, you will stand against it. It is on that basis that they can judge the quality of man that you are, the kind of leader you are. When they see it, they see that you are standing for the truth. You are also weak. Your strength lies on your people that support you. They will lift you up forever and say, we are going to stand with this man. God told them, the children of Israel, the kind of king you want now is going to deal with you and mess you up. It's in the book of uh, First Samuel. But he told them, but this is the kind of king I want for you. And that king God has prepared. He raised up David and David had the heart of the people. So regardless of religion, 
any man that has the heart of his people will normally win their support and will grow strong in his administration. So we don't have such things happen among uh, Igbo politicians. They are only interested in making money, making investments, and the people can die. Whenever they come to the community, they can give you bags of rice. Pick one or two or give them scholarship. And they hail him. They hail him. And they hail him. The people who are hailing him are so foolish, so stupid, so unreasonable. They don't even want to ask for their right. All this man is using to give to them is theirs, which he collected to himself. Collected to himself. And he's using it to give them stipends. And they are very grateful, bowing down and worshipping him. You will remain in bondage forever if you continue like that. Until your eyes open to demand for what belongs to you. That is why anybody who is not born again is in bondage. Even though he enjoys himself. You are handsome or beautiful, have nice statistics, make money, live healthy, do business, you are loved by people, you are good, people appreciate you. You are still in bondage until the day you come to Christ and be free. This is something you can never fathom if you are a man in the flesh or maybe you entered into the church just to come and stay there and uh, worship. No, you must come to the point where you have an encounter with God. You know it's your father. There's a relationship that binds you together. You are cool. You say, my life is hid with Christ in God. It's a problem. And that's what's happening in the world today. So many dear friends, they have high hopes. When Obi comes, he will do magic. He will do everything for them. Um, those uh, Igbo Biafrans. They are Biafrans, but they are Igbo Biafrans. Who, who were in Biafra before supporting Mazin Namdekanu, were outraged by his kidnap, and suddenly when Peter Obi came up, they abandoned ship and followed Peter Obi. Those Biafrans, they are in bondage. Because the man whom you are following is showing it. I don't know why you cannot see. If those people that were thrown their bodies floated in the Sioux River are in any way related to you and you are still supporting Obi. It means you don't even have value for your own life. You are useless. Because what he did affected your brother who was fighting for his right. There were Marshall members. There were Biafrans. Even though Under was wicked. There were Biafrans. Human life matters. In the Biafra we are going to have, we have to have value for human lives. Nothing like him. I am to get a job. Or go and meet this or let him talk. Or go. That's never going, it's not going to happen. Everything will change. So even if you are disabled, but mentally you're okay to take an exam and pass in an interview, you get the job. They provide you wheelchair, even the mobile one that uses electricity. Because what we need is your performance, your output. It has nothing to do with your legs. And so Obi came out and said it openly. On many occasions, he has denied by action and by words. He has denied the Igbo people. Obi denied the Igbos when he allowed Ikemba Newi to die of his ailments and refused to, as a governor of a state, to use resources to help this man out. He's the father of Biafra. Obi refused. That action showed that if he can do it to Ikemba, he will do it to you, his follower. <laughs> you don't know. That's one. Based on action. Number two, comments Obi has made. No, no, let me start. Number two, action there. When he did it to the boys in Isu River, it's an evidence. So, a comment Obi has made. Obi said, don't vote me because I'm an evil man. He told the Northerners, you'll be better beneficiaries of my administration. Obi came out again and said, Biafra died 50 years ago. By his actions, by his comments, he's proving it. And you are yet following him. I heard recently, Chimamanda Adichie, refused honor from Nigeria because she doesn't consider herself a Nigeria. You know, some time ago, I think last year, I criticized her on Facebook. Some people were coming to abuse me. That time she was talking nonsense. She, she was the one that went to support Obi. That Obi is her uncle. She cannot wait to see him to be the president of Nigeria. Today, that same Chimamanda Adichie, I don't know. You know, I saw the post that Simon sent and was recommending her. Well, I don't know. One thing I know about Chimamanda is until the end of the day, I really know, truly know where she stands. That she just made that comment, she's not in Nigeria, could have also been because of the present state of Nigeria. She may be hoping that when Obi becomes president, she can now take honor. That means she is still talking about Nigeria, but under the leadership of Peter Obi, not under Buhari. She's talking about Nigeria, she's not talking about Biafra. So I'm not quick to recommend her at all. Until at the end of the day, I'm not quick at all to recommend her. Because I know the comment she made last year, when Obi declared for presidency on the platform of the Labour Party. I've not forgotten what your mother said. And I criticized her. I told her that 
all, all that God has blessed you with knowledge, respect and honor within the international community. And then having seen what has happened in Biafra land, this is all you could say, I'm disappointed in you. I may never come to a level of addressing the world in life and I'm not interested. You may be very intelligent, but you don't have common sense because she did not exhibit common sense there. If she's trying to exhibit it now, why? Can she explain to us why she's rejecting Nigeria's honor? Is it because of the present constitution of Nigeria, uh, what constitutes Nigeria presently that she's not happy with? But in her mind, she still believes that when a better person comes in, when they give her a word, she will take it. When that person comes and begins to do a better job in Nigeria, like Pitopi, that means Chimamanda Dadiche does not believe in Biafra. And I don't give her commendation. I don't care. This is my personal opinion. So I don't believe all that, that stuff that she's saying. If you are a Biafra, come out plainly and say it. You have the power. You move around the whole world. You are respected nations. No, you go and advocate for Biafra. We have people like that. We have people like that. was the same problem Ojuku had when Zeke was there. These are people that the world respects. They want them to speak to them in the international fora. What would you do? You are advocating for humanity. Your people are dying. You are talking about the sufferings in Africa and slave trade. They are raping our women. They are killing people. And I ask a question. If Fulani headsmen should go to Chimamanda's mother or sister and capture them, take them to the bush and rape them the whole night. And at the end of the day, video them, how they have abused them, put them naked, mess them up, how they are messing them, and then butcher them. You think Chimamanda will come and, and begin to laugh with Fulani? She would identify with Biafra then. She would carry a case to the international fora that they are raping people in Biafra. That is when she would talk they are raping people. Don't wait until Nigeria happens to you before you have sense. Think about it. This thing we are doing, we are not doing it because, because we hate anybody. We see the hand of God working for us. I know we made mistakes. We sinned. And God allowed us to suffer the consequences. But we came to realization of our mistakes. And now we are crying and calling upon God to help us. So far, the people that have been the aggressors killing are those on the north. Not us. Nobody ever heard that we took ammunition and went to Sokoto State to kill Sokoto people. No, they left the north to come here to kill us. So in defense of our land, we raised up the ESN. Very simple. So B2B has no plans for the evil man for good. It is evil. If for anything to show his allegiance and loyalty to the northern land, our lives will be on the line. They will kill so many of us. Opus Orima said it. I will kill them. On the forum, Chiwa. And now, uh, Simon I was saying something that uh, there was an agreement Peter B had with Biafra when he wanted to run for vice presidency with Atiku Abubakar. Emma, those of you that follow this man, well, you are Nigerians because if tomorrow you come into government, you do the same thing. The this same Peter B said that he doesn't have any political agenda different from what Atiku has. Remember, he was his vice. So the man whom he deputized or was run, who he served as his running mate is now in PDP. He went to the Labour Party. They have the same political ideas. They are still friends. And I think you can always copy to be and talk to him one on one. So my wonderful family, that brings us to the end of this update. Do what to like the video, share, and subscribe. Thank you and bye bye.